What's going on, New York Jet fans? Appreciate you stopping in. We are three plus weeks away from the long awaited home opener. We have one preseason game tomorrow and then kind of the the nothing one uh, against the Giants where everybody is fighting for uh, the bottom of the roster there. And to have a five point wish list from now until the start of the regular season, besides the obvious of all players either getting or remaining healthy. My first wish is that. Makai Becton goes ahead and grabs his right tackle job by the horns. I wasn't just being a hater and making a step of when I said all summer long that Max Mitchell and Billy Turner ain't it. I'm just watching them play on all 22 and having eyes. It's not complicated. I'm not looking at hand placement or footwork. I'm not Brian Baldinger. I just know when the defender is beating the ass of the offensive lineman. And that was happening far too frequently on their film. Makai Becton, he gives this Jets a whole nother ceiling on the offensive line, undeniably. And look, if you can't trust him to play an entire season, I understand that, then you're not going to have him be your primary backup anyway. Just start him, and as long as he goes, he goes. And then you can go from there. But start with your best guy. It makes no sense to do anything else as long as um, you know he's okay playing there and the injury risk isn't monumentally higher on the right side than the left side. Uh, that's number one. Number two, did all that Joe Tipman, you know, Joe Tipman written off uh, late July as a bust can never start. I don't know about that. Uh, now, he's definitely going to be at least the number two center. It looks like in Schweitzer being more of a reserve guard, which I think is the better role for both of these players. And Connor McGovern, I've defended McGovern. I, I think that the Jets have had a lot of bigger problems on their team and on their offensive line in the past three years than Connor McGovern. But let's be honest, Ian, he didn't take. 20% of market value to come play with the Jets. Okay. The NFL landscape looked at Connor McGovern and said, you are a backup. He's making less than $2 million and he'd be a very, very capable backup. But the pass pro last year was left a lot to be desired. And Joe Tipman, I think he got a better anchor. He's a much better athlete. The run game, the screen game is going to have a lot more juice. Connor McGovern is a, two, is a vet minimum backup for a reason. And Joe Tipman was the first center off the board for a reason. If you'd like to get a plug and play guy there. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. I think the snap accuracy is actually the one thing that's kind of holding him back a little bit was not in shock on a lot at Wisconsin. So once he can get that squared away, he's just too talented. And you're talking about Tipman and Becton being on this offensive line. It's, it's a lot better. It's a lot more exciting in my opinion. Number three, staying on the offensive line. I just said it's going to be all awesome and good stuff, but I still would like the Jets to add an offensive tackle. I'm not saying trade for David Bakhtiari. I'm not saying make a panic trade for an overrated, overpaid Jonah Williams and mortgage the future or any of that. But could you bring a reunion with the Kelvin Beecham, who can still play and is still in the dang league, believe it or not, making a couple million bucks. We've talked about James Hurst. There's four or five guys who I think could come in and they're still low end starters and they're significantly better than Billy Turner, whose roster spot should not be guaranteed and even maybe could be played over Max Mitchell. And Max Mitchell ideally gets the red shirt year this year. He should have got last year where he can recover, recover from his health um, issue. He can add the weight that he needed to add. And I think that's a better situation for the Jets' depth at offensive line if they're not going to add a starter. I think we could all agree that that would be a fair compromise uh, to address this offensive tackle room with the depth. Uh, next up, number four, I want Zach Wilson to continue to look how 80% of backup quarterbacks in the NFL look. I said that for a reason because, oh, he sucks, you're delusional. Look, look at that one pass he made. No, look at this pass he made. No other fan base in the entire NFL is doing that with their backup quarterback. I promise you. Here's what every other fan base does uh, when their backup quarterback plays in the preseason. They do look like absolute dog crap. No? Okay, cool. And they move on with their life, right? Because they don't have the emotional baggage of Zach Wilson being drafted to be the franchise savior. Blaine Gabbert is the name I always refer to. Blaine Gabbert was a top 10 pick to be a franchise quarterback. Did he do that? No. He was a bust. Um, but... The Buccaneers and the Chiefs both trusted him to be their backup quarterback during Super Bowl runs. Zach Wilson's career is off to a similar start to than Blaine Gabbert. His career isn't over, but there's no reason that Zach Wilson can't be just as competent of a backup as Blaine Gabbert. None. Their career stats are almost identical. Their career winning percentage is almost ident identical. So if the Jets are doing some catastrophic mistake with their backup quarterback situation, then so is pretty much the 85% of the teams in the NFL besides a handful who shell out big money for the Teddy Bridgewater or I guess Mike White level backups that cost seven million. 
Um, and, and if the Jets did do that and they paid $7 million for uh, to keep Mike White, now you're paying your backup quarterbacks a total of $17 million. Is that the kind of roster management you want? Then you don't have Dalvin Cook or whoever. So it, there's only so much you, you can do. Um, he's on the team. He's making $10 million. Coach him up to be able to be the backup quarterback. Next, uh, I want either Zach Kuntz or Jason Brownlee to hopefully make themselves uncuttable. I have faded the Jason Brownlee hype. Personally, I see a guy, I get leery of the contested catch guys in college, right? That was Denzel Mims. Oh, he's big and fast. Well, does he separate? No. Does he get yak? No. All right. Then you're probably not going to be a difference making wide receiver in the NFL. Now, I've been wrong before. Now, I hope to be wrong again about Jason Brownlee. Sometimes undrafted free agents are Tony Adams and Bryce Huff, and sometimes they're undrafted for a reason. My hunch is the latter with Brownlee, but I really want one of these guys to show out and crack the roster because we could use a developmental pipeline pass catcher um, with Corey Davis, Miko Hardman, and Randall Cobb in the last year of their contracts, and you know, even somebody like CJ Uzama, who maybe you don't want to be paying that kind of money forever. Uh, it'd be nice if Jason Brownlee making no money um, in 2024 could challenge to be one of your, your number four receiver, even making no money that that's beautiful. You need guys like that in a salary cap league. And with Koontz, I get it. He's a seventh round pick for a reason, just like Brownlee. Uh, it's a lottery ticket, but man, I, I think he was a seventh round pick partially because he blew out his knee and people didn't think he could block at all. So if he's healthy and he's putting uh preseason tape together where he's blocking a little bit and he was a seventh round pick and he's cut, I think a bad team can roster him, especially with the position scarcity of tight end. We have not had a tight end in my lifetime that defensive coordinators have had to plan to stop. And we just drafted one of the best athletes in combine history. So whatever tiny percent chance it is that he hits, I would like to take that chance with Koontz and you get him up to speed enough on special teams to roster him. You know, Jason Brownlee could ideally if I'm wrong about him, which I hope I am, maybe he replaces a guy like Corey Davis in a year or two. Zach Koontz, who does he replace? Al Nazard. <laughs> like actually, I think Al Nazard and Zach Koontz are both kind of in between tight end, receiver, big slot kind of guys who can block but don't act, don't really have tight uh, wide receiver separation. I think they actually have similar games, believe it or not. And then uh, I want Izzy Abanacanda to continue to build on his solid preseason. I'm going more than five here. I got one more after this as well. Uh, is he, I think he's shown me more in the preseason than I thought he would. I thought that he was going to need a little bit more time just because the vision and the contact balance were lacking in college, even though he's a great athlete, he's super fast, still only 20 years old, but he's been a lot more physical and falling forward for those extra yards has been the thing I I've been impressed with in preseason. We know um, when he gets in the open field, nobody's going to catch him. We know even if a defender has an angle on him, he's going to beat you to the pylon. But being able to churn out those extra two yards after contact, that is what I want to see from Izzy Abanacanda. And finally, Zaire Barnes, who I like. Uh, I've made the comp to Quincy Williams. I actually think he's a little bit more fluid and has maybe a higher coverage ceiling than Quincy Williams. He's never going to be the thumper that Quincy is. And not expecting much out of him this year, he would be your linebacker four or five and special teamer. I think he could be just like Quincy Williams by year three, a, a mid starter. And you'll take that return on investment with a set, with a six round pick every single day. But can he show enough in the last two preseason games where you feel like, okay, if just like last year when Jamie and Sherwood had to play for one half, could you not, can you not be a liability? Um, like Sherwood wasn't. So that's what I'm looking at. Those, however many it was, I don't know. I, I added a few, six or seven. My wish list for the rest of the Jets preseason. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll talk all soon.